close your eyes and place your mind with the breath. And John Lee's image is of placing an egg on a plate. If you crash it down, the egg will break. So put it gently down, but not so gently that it's not touching the plate. In other words, you want to stick with the breath, not force it too much, but just keep with it, keep with it, keep with it as much as you can. Wherever you have a sense of energy flowing in the body, you can focus there, wherever it seems easiest to stay focused. But try to be as consistent as you can. And one of the reasons why we work with the breath is because all too often when we focus too strongly on the body, it gets the energies in disarray. So you want to learn how to have just the right touch, a touch that you can maintain. Because there's a lot going on in the mind that you want to see, and some of it takes place over time. In other words, some of the things you do are like sticking your finger in the fire. As soon as you stick the finger in the fire, it's already hot. You don't have to wait until your next lifetime to see the results of sticking your finger in the fire. But there are other things that take time. And to see the connection, you have to be here consistently. Otherwise, it's like having a TV on in the room, and you walk through, and you see what's happening, and then you walk out and you're away for five minutes and come back again. And you don't know what's happened in the meantime. If you're interested enough, you might try to sketch things out. But otherwise, what we see are just little bits and pieces with no connections. And even when we try to assume connections, sometimes we're assuming things that are not there. So you want to be continually right here. So steady, but with a light touch. That way you see what's going on in the body, you see what's going on in the mind. And gain a sense of what your actions are doing, particularly what the actions of the mind are doing, and the impact they have on the body, and the impact they have on other actions in the mind. It's only when you see patterns like this that you can learn how to undercut the things that are unskillful. Because otherwise you're just guessing. You may have heard somebody say, this is causes that and that causes this. But you have to see it in action or to really hit home, oh, yes, it's right. These kinds of actions cause pain. These kinds of actions don't. This is particularly true when you're dealing with issues of the pleasures of daily life. The Buddha didn't say that all sensory pleasures are bad. After all, he tried the path of trying to deny himself every sensual pleasure he could, and he almost died. He realized that was not the way. But as I said, you don't deny the pleasures that are in line with the Dharma, but if something is not in line with the Dharma, then you let go of it. How do you know what's in line with the Dharma? Now we see the impact that it has on the mind, what kind of mind state that particular quest for pleasure is coming from. And then when you actually get the pleasure, what, hap what happens to the mind? And this is one of the things you have to watch over time. And then you begin to see certain pleasures get you riled up and have an impact on your meditation, a bad impact. And so you realize you've got to stay away from those pleasures. Other pleasures are conducive to getting the mind to settle down, to have a sense of well-being. Those are okay. And they would give some general guidelines. In other words, any pleasure that's based on breaking the precepts, you have to avoid. But beyond that, you have to see for yourself. It's like the issue of monks in Thailand. Some monks can stay in a monastery, gain awakening in the monastery. Other monks can't. They have to go out in the forest and live, live with some difficulties for a while before the mind is willing to settle down. You can't determine beforehand which kind of person you are. But you have to learn by observing. An important part of observing is just being as steadily here as you can, as steadily alert as you can. So remember that, steady but with a light touch. Having a light touch but steady. Combine those two qualities and you'll learn an awful lot about the mind.